The execution of Nathaniel Woods occurred on 5 March, 2020, at Atmore State Prison in Alabama, in what was described by many as a controversial execution due to questions about the reliability of Woods's conviction and sentence. The murder that Nathaniel Woods was convicted of took place on 17 June, 2004, in Birmingham, Alabama. Three police officers unexpectedly came into the home of Nathaniel Woods and Kerry Spencer due to their home being a suspected drug house. Spencer had an SKS rifle when he heard the officers, while Woods was in the kitchen. Spencer came downstairs to see two officers pointing guns at him. Spencer fired shots at all three police officers, leading to their deaths. Woods ran out of the house when he heard the gunshots. Spencer and Woods were both charged with the murders, despite Woods never firing a weapon. Spencer claimed Woods was not involved and said, Nate is absolutely innocent. That man didn't know I was going to shoot anybody just like I didn't know I was going to shoot anybody that day, period. Days before Woods's execution, Controversy started regarding Woods's sentence and whether he was genuinely guilty of the murders he was convicted of. Certain civil rights leaders, including Sean King and Martin Luther King III, urged Alabama Governor Kay Ivey to commute his death sentence. Ivey told Woods's attorney that she denied his request for clemency. Kimberly Chisholm Simmons, the sister of one of the murdered officers, Harley Chisholm III, called Governor Ivy to request clemency for Woods and said, he didn't kill my brother, and he didn't kill the other officers, may they rest in peace. I'm asking for mercy, and I believe my brother would want me to take a stance because of the man he was. Nathaniel Woods's execution by lethal injection began on 5 March, 2020 around 8.38 p.m., but Woods was not declared dead until approximately 9.01 p.m. Nathaniel Woods, 43, was executed on 5 March, 2020. Alabama Department of Corrections via AP Ten minutes before Nathaniel Woods was scheduled to be executed for his role in the 2004 murder of three police officers, the chief of staff to the governor of Alabama received a desperate phone call from the sister of one of the slain cops. Her plea, spare his life. He didn't kill my brother, and he didn't kill the other officers, may they rest in peace Kimberly Chisholm Simmons, the sister of murdered officer Harley Chisholm III, pleaded during the call that started around 5.50 p.m. on March 5. I'm asking for mercy and I believe my brother would want me to take a stance because of the man he was. Governor K. Ivis Chief of Staff, Joe Borner, said he would relay the message to other officials and suggested that Simmons should expect a call back. But the murder victim's sister never heard from another Alabama official, even after a temporary U.S. Supreme Court stay bought Woods a few more hours. Its justices ultimately elected not to intervene in his execution, and at 9.01 p.m., Woods, 43, died by lethal injection. The extraordinary 11th-hour phone conversation, which was recorded by Woods' attorney and shared with USA Today, has not been reported. The call was the result of back-channel negotiations in which Woods' attorney, Lauren Fairano, was informed by sources connected to the highest levels of Alabama government within an hour of her client's scheduled execution that he could be spared if a victim's family member begged for his life. For those close to Woods, and undoubtedly the condemned man himself, the failed call for mercy was only one of several moments of emotional whiplash on the last day of his life. The prospect that Woods would be allowed to live was repeatedly held before them and then yanked away. The Supreme Court stay caused his family members to celebrate, believing he had been spared. His family learned within hours that his execution was still imminent. Woods' imam, who was set to witness his execution, said he was sent away from the prison and told he could return if the execution went ahead. 
but the Imam was notified too late, and Woods was executed without his spiritual advisor present. Woods's case attracted national attention including from high-profile supporters such as Martin Luther King III and Kim Kardashian because of claims of police misconduct, flimsy evidence and poor representation in his 2005 trial. Prosecutors acknowledged that Woods didn't pull the trigger that ended the lives of the three police officers, instead convincing a jury that he had lured them into being killed by another man. The confessed shooter, Kerry Spencer, who is himself on death row, has said Woods was actually 100% innocent. It's unclear what steps Borner took, if any, after receiving the call from Simmons. He did not respond to an interview request for this story. His cell phone number that Simmons used that night which Woods' own sister also said she subsequently called to beg for mercy and that was then tweeted out to the world by King 3 has since been disconnected. A spokeswoman for Ivy also declined to make the governor available, instead resending a statement she had issued the night of Wood's execution. This is not a decision that I take lightly, but I firmly believe in the rule of law and that justice must be served read the statement adding that the governor's thoughts and most sincere prayers are for the families of the officers. May the God of all comfort be with these families as they continue to find peace and heal from this terrible crime. Not all of Chisholm's siblings feel the way his older sister Kimberly does about Woods's execution. At a news conference after the execution, members of Chisholm's family cheered the outcome. One cop killer down as we patiently wait for the next one said Star Sidelinka, sister to Harley and Kimberly. Fair Aino. Wood's attorney, said her client's last hours alive, while his family hung on every development, were the cruelest moments I've ever been through in my life. Kimberly Chisholm Simmons and her brother Harley Chisholm three before his murder. Courtesy Kimberly Chisholm Simmons. Simmons' involvement in the final day of Wood's life started a few weeks earlier when she received a letter at her home in Florida from authorities stating that Woods was set to be executed. Simmons hadn't closely followed the case since Woods' conviction, and she said the murder of her police officer brother whom she called Buddy had fractured her family. Although her sisters were eager for retribution, Simmons felt compelled to send an email to a non-profit death penalty website with the hope that it might reach Woods before he was put to death. I forgive him for any involvement he had personally I don't feel he's guilty as much as Spencer Simmons wrote. Only God knows the truth of what has really happened and if it's in God's plan he will stay his execution. But I want him to know he is forgiven by me. The email was forwarded to Wood's attorney, Fairino, the day before his scheduled execution. Fairino makes her living in finance and her pro bono legal work for Woods was a no-frills family affair. Her mother pulled legal files at the courthouse, and her stepfather, Bart Starr Jr. the son of a revered Alabama and Green Bay Packer quarterback and member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame worked the phones with well-placed friends to lobby for mercy for the death row inmate. Starr Jr. was at Fairino's Birmingham home with less than an hour to go before Wood's execution when one of those calls bore fruit. A prominent political donor told Starr his brother, an Alabama state senator, had conveyed that government officials might consider a stay if a victim's family member pleaded for it. Fairino frantically emailed Simmons, I am pleading with you, please give me a call. The victim's sister readily agreed to ask Alabama authorities to spare Wood's life. Fairino's audio recorder caught the frenzied next hour. While Simmons waited on the other line, Fairino dialed numbers to try to reach an Alabama official but found only switchboards and office voicemails. At about 5.45 p.m. roughly 15 minutes before Wood's scheduled execution, Fairino heard Star Jr. yell out, What? Oh, no, 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 Fairino said, weeping as she told Simmons, I think they are executing him right now. 
but Ferreno's mother informed the lawyer it was actually good news. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas had issued a temporary stay of execution. Simmons began celebrating. God loves Nathaniel Woods, she said. Members of Woods' family learned of the stay from their cell phones and interpreted it as a lasting measure. Earlier that afternoon, Woods, seven family members and his imam had joined him for what was supposed to be his last meal, and he had for the first time met his grandson. Now, his family and friends were overjoyed that it wouldn't also be the last time. I'm shaking, I'm just so excited I don't know what to do, you know. Family friend Jasmine Walters said moments after they learned of the stay. I'm just so grateful. I'm so, so grateful. But Fereno was aware that the Supreme Court's stay was only an interim step to allow the justices a couple of hours to decide whether to intervene, which was a long shot. Her efforts to reach an Alabama official before the stay might be lifted got a break when her stepfather ran to her office with Borner's cell phone number, obtained via a former University of Alabama football player. After Borner picked up, he declined to put Governor Ivy on the phone with Simmons, saying she was on another phone call. Simmons emphasized to Borner that all she was asking for was a renewed look at Wood's case. I think they need to go over the evidence that they have brought forth Simmons said. I mean, it's not going to hurt nothing. I'm begging the courts she added. Please have mercy. Borna, a former congressman, responded dispassionately. Have you communicated in writing this request, he asked. Borna said that though he wasn't doubting Simmons was who she said she was. Her identity may have to be verified. Because of the severity of this we have gotten calls from all over the country from people purporting to know things that they may or may not know. But Borner said he would convey Simmons' plea to the state attorney general and the governor's legal counsel. He took down her number and said representatives from those offices may give you a call to get some additional information. Two hours passed with no Alabama official calling Simmons. At 8.06 p.m., the Supreme Court issued a one-sentence decision denying Wood's stay of execution, removing the only remaining obstacle to his death. Wood's sister, Pamela, said she also reached Borner on the cell phone number, asking to speak to the governor. I begged, I screamed, I cried Pamela Woods said. He would not let me talk to her. He just said no I begged him, screaming, please, let me speak to her and he told me, no and he hung up in my face. Simmons said she could tell during her conversation with Borna that it probably would have little effect. I sensed, you know, you're not going to stop this, lady she said. They're going to take this man no matter what I say. It's already in their hearts to kill him. Nathaniel Woods with family members during his final visitation. Garcia Roberts, Gus. Nathaniel Woods' imam, Yusef Mazanit, said he was told to leave the prison after the Supreme Court stay and to expect an official to call him and escort him back in if the execution went forward that night. But the imam said nobody called him until shortly before Woods was returned to the execution chamber at close to 9 p.m. By then, thinking the execution was off, Mazenit had returned to his home in Mobile, more than 50 miles away. I feel that they did purposefully keep me out of the prison for Woods' execution, Mazenit told USA Today last week. Samantha Rose a spokeswoman for the Alabama Department of Corrections, disputed Mazenit's account. She said in a statement that after Mazenit was asked to wait in a certain area for the execution, he elected to leave this location on his own accord without speaking to security staff. When security staff arrived to take him to the execution, the imam was no longer on site. We will not speculate on the reasons why this imam chose to leave when he did.
Mazenit said he had spoken at length with Woods about topics including what he wanted done with his body. Before the day of the execution, Mazenit wrote to the Holman Warden requesting that Woods' body not be autopsied since it is against our religious beliefs and the cause of death will be known. Alabama officials nonetheless performed the autopsy March 6, according to Farino. Alabama Corrections Department spokeswoman Rose said that decision was at the direction of Escambia County District Attorney Stephen Billy. Billy's office did not respond to a message seeking comment for this story. In a letter to Farino before the autopsy was completed, Billy said it was his policy to order autopsies on all executions, to confirm the cause and manner of death. It is not my intention of changing my position on this matter Billy wrote to the lawyer, and would appreciate you not contacting my office again regarding this issue. Fairino said she has not been informed of what the coroner found to be the official cause of Wood's death. Thank you for watching Death Row.